This video is best viewed in full screen mode and on YouTube that's this icon right here and if you have a high bandwidth connection uh, you also want to watch it in HD which is this icon right here. This is a demonstration of the Judgment Management System software. This software is designed to help judgment enforcement specialists manage and organize their caseload. Before I demonstrate uh, all the aspects of the program I'd just like to go over a few highlights. I like to think of this program as having a, a place for everything, which allows you to put everything in its place. Uh, if you have multiple judgment debtors, you have space to enter that in. If you have uh, domestications on the judgments, you can uh, have a space for putting in that information. Uh, the system will also remind you if uh, you have any judgments that are uh, getting ready to expire. Uh, if you have judgment debtors on a payment plan, there's uh, system in place to deal with that and it'll remind you when it's time to build the judgment debtor and it'll let you know when the uh, judgment debtor payments are past due. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, also if you have any uh, actions that are due on the judgment, uh, it'll let you know about that. Uh, you're also able to uh, search the database. Uh, you can search on any field and sort on any field. It automatically makes uh, multiple backups across uh, more than one hard drive if you desire and you can also restore uh, your entire database from a backup or you can go out and just uh, restore one uh, particular record from the backup and it also allows you to uh, create document templates and you can pull any field in the database out and put into your documents uh, which makes uh, document creation uh, very easy also, the system is designed so that you never have to enter in court information more than once. Uh, once you've entered a court into the system, uh, you never have to type that in again. Also, if you're a member of the NJN, uh, you can go over here and select this option, and you can actually import all of your data and uh, convert all your documents in one step. Uh, I would recommend watching this video first on um, how that process works. Also, you'll find that there are uh, help links all over throughout the, uh, the program. Uh, most forms that you bring up will have a link on it to bring you to a help. Um, also, over here, if you uh, click on the help menu, uh, you have a, a help for your first judgment, for your first domestication. Also, uh, there's a help video for every tab. And for just about every aspect of the program, uh, there is help. And the help in this program is uh, all orientated around video walkthroughs. Uh, very similar to this video here, uh, you'll get a video walkthrough, uh, take you uh, step by step through any issue that you may have with the program. So uh, in the event that you do get stuck on something, just click on the help and you will get walked through it step by step. And uh, so you should be able to get across any hurdles that you may uh, come across. So having said that, let's go in and take a look at what we can do. Okay, I'm going to move to this record here, number two. And uh, first part I want to go over is this judgment tab and this top area here, which is where you put in the information on your judgment, the original one. If you have a domestication, uh, or two or three, you can enter the information in on these tabs. Um, over here is where you have the court information and um, what you do here is you uh, don't type it in here you click on this link and it brings you up a list of all the courts and then you just select the list the item in the list that is the court you want and click on that and there you go it pulls the information in and that list is fully maintainable so you can add to it um, any court that uh, you want and the idea is you only have to enter the data in one time and then from then on you select from the list. Uh, over here is your general information on the court and uh, just whenever you see a link like this go ahead and you can click on it and see what happens. Uh, in this particular case it gives you the ability to edit what shows up in this drop down. Uh, over here is all the uh, dollar amounts involved in this judgment and uh, these check marks here uh, correspond to whether or not the item to the left has interest charged on it um, and this amount due is the amount due as of today it's always calculated accurately as of today uh, it doesn't matter if it's simple interest compound interest partial payments uh, whatever the case may be it 
calculates it out. If you click on this here, it brings up the account summary uh, form, which uh, basically goes over all the financial transactions uh, that have happened on this judgment to justify the current balance due. And uh, if you want to, you can uh, put this into a document. Uh, over here, you have the ability to override the uh, default interest rate. Um, so if I want to, I come over here and say, uh, per the judgment, uh, the actual rate um, on this was 12% uh, simple, and it was uh, awarded as of the date of the judgment. And now what you've done is you override the um, state default interest rate with a, uh, a custom interest rate. Uh, down here at the bottom is where you put in all the information for your uh, original judgment creditor. And if there's two or three of them, you have room for uh, more. And right here, you select on, uh, click on one, every one of these would be considered their primary phone number. All right, and let's move over to the uh, judgment debtor and contacts tab. And uh, here you have room for up to three different judgment debtors to enter uh, all kinds of detailed information on them. And down here at the bottom is where you put in your contact information. And these are people that you'd want to contact specifically in regards to this judgment. Uh, for example, here our first contact is the ex-husband. And if you want to modify what shows up in this list here, you just click on that link and it brings you up a dialog to do just that. Uh, over here is the assets tab and it is really easy to use. You have uh, four different categories of assets, uh, your employment, banking, real property, and other assets. Um, and this makes extensive use of this grid tool, which is used a lot uh, throughout the program. And the nice thing about the grid tool is that it allows for unlimited entry. Uh, whenever you enter something into this bottom empty row, it always creates another uh, empty row for you to enter data into. And for example, I go over here and I could say Jill Jackson works at Home Depot. And you notice it created another row there. And um, <clears throat> uh, also on this grid, if you right click on the row header on any of these grids, you're generally going to get some sort of uh, pop up menu. And for example, I can go here and I can go ahead and delete uh, that uh, row I put in there. And uh, that's pretty much the assets tab. Uh, over here, uh, we have the payments tab. Uh, this tab is probably one of the more complicated tabs on the uh, system because uh, it's where you do all your accounting at but it's really not too painful uh, over here you can select your judgment debtor uh, if there's no if there's only one judgment debtor you can uh, just you know leave it blank like this but if there's multiple judgment debtors you can select the one that's appropriate for this information uh, these three columns here have to do with whether or not you have your uh, judgment debtor on a uh, payment plan um, if you don't have your judgment debt on a payment plan, you can just hide those columns by clicking that. In this particular situation, we have our judgment debtor on a payment plan of 200 bucks a month uh, due on the 15th of the month. Uh, this is the date due, this is the amount due, and this is the date that you send them out a bill. And uh, over here, uh, if they're on a payment plan, you check this and it brings up your bill reminder. And that allows you to select how many days before uh, the uh, bill is due uh, do you want to uh, be reminded to send out uh, the bill? So uh, it just basically tells you that, uh, for example, you have a set for 15 days and there's a uh, bill due date of 11-15. It'll rewarn you on 11-1 that it is time to send a bill out to the judgment debtor. Uh, over here are the three uh, columns that have to do with getting paid from the judgment debtor. Uh, the date, the amount, and the reference number, which would be like the check number or the money order number. And over here is uh, payouts to the original uh, judgment uh, creditor and the date, the amount, and uh, the check number. Um, over here uh, is the totals. Uh, the total payments from the judgment debtor is 600. The total sent out to the original judgment creditor is uh, 300, and that leaves 300 remaining. Click on the link to move to the next part of the video series.